Hey friends, it's Brittany Valadez for BravelyDaily.com. Thank you so much for checking out this interview where I know you're excited to see my chat with Cade Thompson. We talked about everything ranging from, okay, okay, girls who ho are hoping that you're his future wife. We talked about what he's looking for in a girl. Um, we also talked about his music, where he sees himself in five to 10 years and so much more. Uh, we're gonna get there. All right, but before we get into that, I just wanna remind you guys to make sure you follow me on social media. Follow me on Instagram, and you can also follow me on TikTok as well. I'm trying to build that up. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Those are free things you can do that mean a lot to me. I really appreciate it. Also, if you guys like what I'm wearing, or like I have this necklace and this top, you can get it on my Amazon store. Yes, I am an Amazon influencer, and you can also find stuff like my filming setup, books that I recommend, um, anything you can think of. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. There's stuff for everyone. Check that out. Okay, let's get into this interview. Hi Kate, it's so nice to meet you. Okay, I'm, I'm really excited, but the first question that I actually have to ask you is, how many proposals or will you be my boyfriend have you received since Dear Future Wife was released? Oh my goodness, what a great question. I don't even know if I can count how many, but let's just say every time I play that song live, there's always a few people that uh, might want to put their name in the hat. <laughs> And let me guess, God told every single one of them that you were their future husband. Oh my goodness, Brittany, you nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I'm still praying. Now you're 20 and a lot of guys your age are dealing with maybe one foot in the world, one foot out, or struggling to walk the line of Christianity when the world's like pulling at them. Now in Dear Future Wife, I like that it seemed that you were almost vulnerable and saying, you know what, hey, I'm not perfect. I'm not Jesus Christ but I'm trying to do the best that I can. What inspired you to write that specific part of A Dear Future Wife? Yeah, first of all, this song really was a hard song to write, if I'm gonna be honest. It was, you know, I wanted to write a song that can be real. I felt like this was a topic that not a lot of people have talked about, and I wanted to share that in the music and say, hey, look, I'm not perfect, but I'm trying to be the best person that I can be following Jesus, who is perfect, the perfect example. And as I keep my eyes on him, I can be more like him every single day for my future wife. And that's why I wrote that song. Now, Cade, so many people have been encouraged by it, guys included. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate that. Okay, side note, girls, I want to tell you this. You cannot change a guy. Guys are going to be struggling with things in their life just like we do. But what you can do is you can pray for them. A lot of it is spiritual warfare. The, the, the devil is wanting to attack, attack the head of the family. The guy will be the head of the family one day. So the devil's gonna go after that. So what can you do in the meantime? You can pray for the guy. And let's say you're saying, Brittany, I don't have a boyfriend or um, I don't really wanna pray for that guy. Then what you can do is just pray for your future husband. And if you don't wanna pray for a specific guy that God hasn't called you to pray for, pray for, for guys in general, your, your guy friends, um, your brother, your father, everybody. That's where we can go to battle on the person's behalf. We cannot change them but we can pray for them. And actually, I have some books I can recommend to you guys. Um, 31 Prayers for My Future Husband and The Power of a Praying Wife. Definitely recommend. I have that in my Amazon store, which I will link below. Okay, back to the interview. Now you have a single out that deals specifically with school shootings, which honestly seem to kind of be like a pandemic right now. What inspired you to write that song specifically? Yeah, so this song, New Normal, started really my senior year of high school. I was walking into my high school just like any other senior would, and this day in particular, there was a school shooting threat at my school. And I just remember the fear that began to just kind of rush over me in that moment. Students were wondering what was going on. I called my mom, she didn't answer the phone. And thankfully later that day, all the students ended up going home safe. But I remember the fear that I felt in that moment that felt so real inside of me, the, the anxiousness, the fear of the unknown that I felt in that very moment. And as I was processing this with my mom, I began to share how a school shooting threat had been one of my biggest fears growing up in today's society. And it's a completely different fear than she had growing up in, in this culture. And so it all really stemmed back for me from when I was five years old. We were taking my sister to school. She was in middle school at that point, and there was an active shooter at her school. And I remember almost kind of living through that. And at a young age, those fears began to creep inside of me. And then growing up in today's world, seeing things on the news, that's really how this fear came to be. 
but I knew the best way to, to fight that fear was with faith and by writing a song. And that's how I really, this song came to be. Thank the Lord that the school shooting did not happen to you or at your school. But I'm pretty sure during that time, um, your faith was tested. Like, you know, Lord, I trust you, but am I gonna die? Right, absolutely. I think, you know, students today face so many different fears than in the past generations. You know, students have to deal with the stress of social media and anxiety through that and all these different things that are stemming different fears in today's culture. The second verse really is me just focusing on that we're not alone because we have this hope found in Jesus. And this song really is a prayer. That's really why I wrote this song as a prayer, as a hope for a new normal. And that's how the song came to be. I'm super thankful for uh, all the fans that, that support my music and my ministry. And, you know, it takes a village to make this happen. So shout out to Red Street Records for believing in this song, New Normal. Um, thank you so much for just championing this song. And I hope that people truly cling on to the message of New Normal as they listen to this song. They'll be able to have a hope for a new normal. And people can listen to it wherever you listen to music. And more information is at uh, we want a new, we want a new and You can find all that info. Now, for those who are just getting to know you or just getting familiar with your music, can you tell us how you had your big break? Yeah, that's a great question. So real quickly, I first started singing in the middle school. That's how I got my start. I sang at my church. I had a youth leader that really encouraged me to come sing at my church. And I just stayed faithful in my middle school years. I eventually began to write songs. They were not so great at the time, but it was all about the craft and focusing on that. And later on, a few years later, I ended up meeting a producer here in Nashville, Tennessee that took a risk on me. So for about four years during my high school years, I was making trips down here back and forth, writing songs while trying to finish high school at the same time. And once I graduated high school, I ended up getting an apartment down here in Faith. I didn't have a record deal at that point. I just felt like the Lord was calling me to be down here specifically. And a couple months later, I ended up signing a record deal with Red Street Records, which is started by Jada Marcus from Rascal Flats. And I've just been so thankful for that whole team, how they believed in me and just really helped spread the message of my music. I'm pretty sure as the gates kept opening and you were getting yeses, your family was like, praise God. It's like the Lord was with you every step of the way. Oh yeah, okay. I just realized I made a pun there. Hey, I like that, Brittany. I like that, you know, the music. <laughs> And I usually do make puns, but that was unintentional, so definitely the Holy Spirit. Now, speaking of your future wife, what are you looking for in a girl? Okay, when I talk to people about this, I always tell them, look, look for the Holy Trinity. Now, the Holy Trinity includes looks, character, and personality. Looks would be the least important, but if you have personality with no character, oh. Tell us, what are you looking for in a girl? Um, I would say, you know, first things first, I want someone who can also wholeheartedly pursue after the Lord with all they got. Um, someone who's confident and in, in who they are in Christ and their identity. I think that's something that's God has been te teaching me lately that I also would like to look for in someone else. Um, and also looks are great too. <laughs> and uh, someone just who's fun to be around and really just seeking after Jesus and all that they do and it reflects in their whole community, so. So what are some things you like? Meaning if you like hiking, but she likes sleeping and probably not gonna work out. Right, right, right. Okay, so in my free time, I love, I mean, I love traveling. That's basically what I do. Um, I love coffee shops. That's always great. I love fishing. That's a new thing for me. That's a very random thing, but I love fishing and uh, being outside and just hanging out with people, so. Wow, Brittany. <laughs> This, this might be the interview. <laughs> Seriously, this might be the interview where you get your future wife. Um, you're welcome, you're welcome. So before we started this chat, I was actually listening to your newest single, Source of Life. Um, can you tell us about that one? Oh, thank you, yes. So my new radio single, Source of Life, hopefully you'll hear it on a station near you very soon. But this song was actually one of the last few songs that I wrote for my album. And I remember just, walking in the writing room that day i had written a lot of songs for the record and i just began to express to the other writers that you know i feel like i have no more words left to say i was kind of feeling just tired in that moment and as we were chatting it's like man we can strive for all these things in this world but at the end of the day jesus is where our, our strength and our life and our source of life can be found and that's how the song came to be 
And little did I know, a year and a half later, we'd be coming out of a pandemic and people are feeling like they can barely take their next breath as they look on social media and all of these things that can be very weighing people down. Um, and that's been so cool just to see that, wow, when we look to Jesus, that is where our life can be found. And, and now performing that song live has been just the coolest thing. I was in Austin, Texas this past weekend and to see people sharing those lyrics and, and singing those lyrics was just so cool for me. So, Where do you see yourself in the next five to 10 years? That is a great question. I mean, I'm just so thankful to be doing what I'm doing now. It's been a dream to do what I'm doing. And honestly, I, I didn't know that I would be at where I'm at today at this young of an age, but I'm just so thankful. And I really want to just continue to do this for as long as I can to use the power of music and the power of the gospel to reach people. And I've seen that truly change people's lives. And so wherever the Lord takes that, I'm here. And I'm available and I'm so excited to see what God continues to do through my music and just thankful for people like you that believe in it and see the vision. So thank you so much. All right, Cade. So where can people find you on social media? You can find me anywhere on social media, any streaming platform uh, is Cade Thompson Music. And then for any streaming platform, it's just Cade Thompson, C-A-D-E-T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Kate, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I had a fantastic time. You were great and I wish you all the best. All right, friends, what did you think of the chat with Kate today? Was there anything that he said that really inspired you or something new that you learned? Um, just let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share with all your friends. It doesn't cost you a penny and it helps me so much. You have no idea. All right, everyone. So make sure to follow Kate on social media and myself as well. I'll list all of that in the description box below and check out my website, bravelydaily.com. Until next time, I'm Brittany Valadez. God bless and I'll see you in the next one.